This is the Elgato Stream Deck Mini, a customizable control pad used for triggering different tasks, especially for live streaming and online meetings. In this video, I'm going to show you how I utilize this awesome little device and show you some possibilities. Let's get into it. The Stream Deck is a little device made by Elgato. Elgato is a company that makes products mainly geared at creators, live streamers. Here I have the Stream Deck Mini, which only has six buttons. Regular Stream Deck has 15 buttons, and the Stream Deck XL has 32 buttons. Out of the box, without it plugged in, this is just a bunch of blank buttons. And that's the beauty of it. You have a blank slate of buttons, which you can customize to do a number of tasks on your computer. This not only works for live streaming, but it works for everyday productivity. Especially in the Zoom world we're living in, I found it very helpful on my online video meetings as well. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I use it in my everyday life and especially in online meetings. I'll also mention some other possibilities you can do with the Stream Deck, and hopefully this will help you decide if this is the right product for you. First, online meetings. Especially with Zoom, there are a number of tasks that you can do with every meeting. With Zoom, the main thing that I do is uh, muting and unmuting myself, turning on and off my camera, and toggling on and off both the participant window and the chat window, and switching between gallery view and speaker mode. Now with the Stream Deck application, it's super easy to get this up and running. I have the Zoom plugin installed, and it has a number of built-in functions already in there. One thing it doesn't have in the plugin is the toggling between gallery view and speaker view. Uh, not to worry, because Zoom supports keyboard shortcuts. You can program any of the Stream Deck buttons to execute a keyboard shortcut. This can be a combination of keys and also a series of key presses. So in the case of toggling between gallery view and speaker view, the keyboard shortcut would be, uh, at least on a Mac, would be Shift Command W. Now, so I've programmed that into the Stream Deck here, and now I'm ready to go. And now that I think of it, the plugin doesn't even have toggling for participant view and the chat window. So I've done the same thing for those as well. At work, we use Microsoft Teams for meetings. And even though there's no plugin for Teams in the Stream Deck software, because Teams supports keyboard shortcuts, I can still program the buttons to do the muting and unmuting of myself and toggling of my video. The Stream Deck also supports a number of applications such as Keynote and PowerPoint. So you can see how that would be useful in being able to control your presentation. But even if there isn't any plugins for a particular application, as long as that application supports keyboard shortcuts, you're good to go. Next, the Stream Deck is especially great for live streaming and content creation because that's what it was made for. So if you're using something like OBS Studio, Ecamm on a Mac, or VMAX on Windows, you have a lot of great built-in tools. I use Ecamm both for live streaming and recording some of these videos. With Stream Deck, I can start and stop recordings, but the most useful thing I think that I can do with the Stream Deck is switch between different scenes. So I have a button here for my main scene, but I can pull up another scene with lower thirds, another scene that I program just for screen sharing and etc. This works for the same with OBS and VMAX as well. But for those of you who have the A10 Mini, there is a way to utilize the A10 Mini together with these different production softwares like VMAX or OBS or even Ecamm. But I'll cover that in another video. The Stream Deck can do a lot of other tasks as well, such as uh, launching applications, opening up certain web pages, or you can use it for multimedia controls as well. Remember, you're not limited to the plugins they offer as long as the applications you are using support keyboard shortcuts. There are some more advanced usages for the Stream Deck as well. There are third-party applications that utilize the Stream Deck as the controller. These third-party applications take the place of Elgato's application. The most popular third-party one is Companion by Bitfocus. They have a huge library of modules that you can use to control a lot of different things, such as home automation products and other applications that the Stream Deck software may not support right out of the box. 
I use Companion sometimes if I need to control the A10 Mini or if I need to use an application such as Zoom OSC, which I briefly talked about in my last video. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that when you take the Stream Deck out of the box, you start with a blank slate. You can really make this your own. Not only can you customize what buttons and layouts you want, but you can also even customize each individual's buttons design to your liking and taste. Now, is this product for you? Well, if you're a content creator, in particular, you do a lot of live streaming events, this is a no brainer. If you're a teacher or do a lot of online presentations, this can be a very valuable tool. But as long as you're comfortable with dealing with technology and you pair this with the right tools. Now, if you're just using Zoom for teaching and no other tools, you may or may not need this. If you're on Zoom calls like me all day, every day, just having that dedicated button to mute myself has been totally worth it. A lot of times I'm participating in a Zoom meeting either as a host and, and a co-host. So there are other tasks that I'm responsible for. So having the Stream Deck has made my life easier as well. The last question I'll answer is, if you are considering a Stream Deck, what size should you get? I have the mini here and I've created folders for each of the applications that I need. But so essentially I can only utilize five buttons at a time because I need one to go back to the main menu. For my case, that's enough. A lot of YouTubers, including those at live streaming pros say that you need at least the regular or Excel. And I would agree that for most people. For me, I knew exactly what I was gonna use this for. If in the future I actually start doing more live streaming and more online events, I may consider getting a bigger one. But for my needs right now, the mini has been sufficient. If you're still figuring out what you are going to use it for, I would say, Start with the iOS version first and see, see how you can use it. Then you can decide how many buttons you need. Now, if you can afford it, go ahead and get the regular one. You'll never regret having too many buttons. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please comment below. If you found this helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.